That is absolutely incredible. The texture is all wrong. You know when you walk through mud and it goes between your toes? Like that's what, that's the <laughs> freaking texture. Hi and welcome back to Fran and Jay's International Kitchen. Although today we're staying very much in the UK. Today we're trying five very regional foods. Today we're trying Dorset Nobs, Peas Pudding, Cornish Nettle Yarg, Lava Bread and Chicken Parmo. So quite a few things from all different parts of the country with different sort of tastes and their way of doing things. Um, of course there are some things that we could have tried but the best when you actually do get them locally. These are just things we can actually get delivered to London or in one case just completely making ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. The Dorset Knob. I'm sorry but that name just cracks me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite excited to try these. Apparently there's a knob throwing competition annually. Yeah well <laughs> most years obviously it's been cancelled due to Covid but um but like just like lobbing it and see how far you go? Pretty much, yeah. That's insane. <laughs> so these biscuits are only now made by this one company, Moores, and they only make them for two months a year. So we're actually quite lucky to actually get hold of a bag. Wow. <laughs> um, although they also come in tins and I really wanted the tin, but I just couldn't get it. I've got a bag instead, so meh. Quite hollow sounding. Yeah, like, I mean, I can totally see you chucking this somewhere. Yeah. Should I throw it against the wall? No, you need to throw it against the wall, babe. Don't throw it against the wall, you'll get crumbs everywhere. <laughs> It'll shatter, surely. Let's try it. <laughs> I mean, it bounced. <laughs> I've got to go fetch that. <laughs> Oops. So they were baked overnight in the falling heat of the wood fired oven and in the morning they would emerge crispy and golden and um, they would stay fresh for weeks and in fact there's a date on here, where is the date gone? The time of filming this is end of April and these don't go off until the 26th of October <laughs> so wow. they're gonna last a while <laughs> That's awesome Alrighty, well do you just eat them? I think you dip them in tea Oh well, good thing we have tea Let's get some tea See, we're prepared Prepared, <laughs> tea um, okay, chinking tea. Alright, let's try this. Cheers. Cheers. Very crumbly. You know, this reminds me quite a lot of South African rusks, mm. but they're a little bit more airy like bread yeah. and they're not as sweet yeah but i can get behind that i've got quite a few texture in there mm. or is it creamy some of that mm, buttery but yeah i can see this going well with like cheese or something mm. it's actually lucky because we've got a cheese coming up soon so mm. maybe we'll bring these back out when we try the cheese on the negative side that makes a lot of crumbs yeah, I've got so many crumbs in my hand right now. Look at that. <laughs> look, at, look at your dress though. <laughs> Happy days. I quite like this. But I think eating it dry isn't doing it justice. It does need to be eaten with other things personally. That's probably why you dip it in the tea. <laughs> oh, come on, you just heaved. Now from Cornwall, we have a Cornish nettle yarg, which is a cheese, and it's covered in stingy nettles. Look at that. That just looks so pretty, doesn't it? I can't wait to get stuck into mm. that. You can't actually smell it. At the moment, all I can smell is the, the leaf. No, I can smell cheese. I can't really, no, really? Yeah. I can't smell any cheese. Oh well. Let's cut this open and uh, see what it looks like. I don't think before this through how we're going to cut this. <laughs> it's quite a 
hard. Jeez. Look at that. Look how pretty that looks. How awesome is that looking? Oh, there you go. There's a cheese smell. Oh, it's quite. It smells really yummy. Yeah. It smells like cre like creamy. It's really creamy. And you can actually eat the nettles as well. So I think we should try a bit from okay. with the nettle. First without. Okay. Well, I'm going with. How's the nettle bit? It's fine. I don't think it adds much to it because it's kind of it's just a very small part of it. So I think I'm overbearing with the actual cheese. That cheese would go really. Do you know what? Melted cheese on toast. This would be the best oh, cheese. Oh yeah. Give it melts, but that's. Yeah, well that is a question. But mm. like, oh, not in your mouth though. So it kind of has a similar flavour to like a port salut. Yeah. Although obviously it's a lot um, sturdier than that. It's a lot harder. Yeah, it's a lot harder. It's. I mean, basically, if you get the chance to have some of this, just have some. Mm. Really yummy cheese. Mm. Should we try some on a knob? Let's try some on a knob. Let's try a cheesy knob. A good combo. That's the sweetness of the bread with the creaminess of the cheese. Yeah. Oh, I'm in heaven. That is a great combo. Mm. We're going to be eating cheese for a little while now. <laughs> Next, we're going up north and we're eating peas pudding. That can looks a bit 80s. I know, it does look. <laughs> Trust me, this is a brand new can, but it does actually look like it's, <laughs> it's like 30 years old. <laughs> um, so this is made from yellow split peas, and as far as I can tell, it's got a very similar consistency to like hummus. Yum. So I'm hoping I quite like this because I love hummus. Okay. Ooh. It smells like peas. It smells like mushy peas. It does smell like mushy peas. And in fact, in some parts of the country, um, it's actually used as with fish and chips instead of mushy peas. Interesting. Well, that's because it has the same flavour as. Yeah. All right, let's tip it out and see what it looks like. <laughs> it's not coming out. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to need uh, some cutlery to get into this. No, no, no. Give it some time. <laughs> it's, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. That's what she said. Come on. You know you want to. <laughs> That's that. awesome. It's just, it's just keeping the shape of the tin. Alright, well let's tuck in. Oh, okay, there we go. It's it's hollow. What? Oh my god, there was a massive hole in ours. There's a little cave at the bottom there, almost like there was an air hole. <laughs> Cheers. D hmm. Hmm. This literally does what it says on the tin. Yeah, it, 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 does, it does taste like mushy peas to me. And you were saying with the hummus texture, it's got that same yeah. texture. It's basically. If you got mushy peas and blitzed up even more to be more like hummus. Yeah, and then squish it all together into a hard log and then put it in the can for months. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. Yeah. It's not unpleasant. It's not. I actually quite like this. This is though uh, like a mass produced product. Um, from what I've been told, buying it fresh or making it yourself fresh makes it a lot nicer but this is just oh, a... I can get I, I can totally understand that yeah moving into Wales now and we have some lava bread which isn't bread or lava <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so lava bread is a Welsh delicacy which is produced from the edible seaweed lava Okay. Uh, and it grows on the rocky coastal areas of Wales 
So essentially it's just seaweed which they've boiled and then it's kind of all sort of pasty. And they put it in a cap. Yeah. Ooh, it's quite green. <laughs> Hmm, okay. Oh! It's speckly. It's not like a really dark seaweed green. Do you know when your granny cooks um, veggies but she cooks them to death? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this looks like. Mm, okay. Cheers. Cheers. How well that's going to come out on camera because it's quite dark but uh yeah it's um it's interesting and it's probably one of those acquired tastes maybe and i'm gonna go i'm not acquired the texture is all wrong it's like soft and squishy and like you know when you walk through mud and it goes between your toes like that's what that's <laughs> freaking texture it's not pleasant it's kind of got a slight you occasionally get a bit of crunch in there as well almost like um you know, if you eat salted caramel, you get the whole grains of salt in there. It's almost like that. So that's... no! No! <laughs> <laughs> no! Lava bread isn't just meant to be eaten raw like this. Um, you can use it as an ingredient on other things. And one thing you can make, it's actually got a recipe on the back of the packet. Yeah. It's for something called a lava cake. So essentially you just mix it up with some oats and fry it and eat it as like a part of a fried breakfast. Should we give that a go? I mean, I highly doubt it's going to have any improvements on that. <laughs> but maybe it'll make it crunchier and with a better texture. Yeah, maybe. Okay, right. let's try. So apparently making lava cakes, or lava bread cakes, whatever you want to call them, very easy. All you need is your tin of lava bread, 30 grams of oats, and some salt and pepper to taste. So we've already got our oats in the bowl, so I'm just going to add our lava bread to that. It just looks so weird, doesn't it? It's just icky. <laughs> and just add in a bit of salt and pepper. Mix it till it forms a nice firm something or other. What's the word I'm looking for? Dough. Dough. Yeah. Mixture. Mixture. A nice firm mixture. Now this should apparently form two patties. So I've got a crumpet ring slash egg ring. It might be a bit too big, but we'll go with it anyway. Kind of looks a bit like black pudding. All right, <laughs> let's fry it. So you're supposed to eat this with bacon and eggs, almost like a Welsh breakfast. So I'm just gonna fry some bacon and get some of the fat in order to cook the lava cakes. Here we go. Get off! <laughs> Need an egg as well. Perfect. Time to serve it. Now these lava cakes are going to stay formed. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I don't think they'll come out how they're supposed to. <laughs> the thing is, what else are you supposed to do with them? It says oats and that lava stuff, and then mix it salt and pepper. <laughs> you don't like it. just gross. It's it's nice. I like it. Oh, well, good for you, love. You can have it all. I could eat a lot of this. I kind of I might need to try and actually do it so it actually stays formed into a proper patty and it's not so sloppy. But oh, let's try it with some egg. Seriously? Yeah. I 
honestly, it doesn't taste that dissimilar to what you get wrapped around sushi. No, but that's... It just tastes like nori. That's like a really thin little bit and then there's all sorts of awesome things like rice and salmon and avo and cucumber and wasabi and soy sauce, which is so different to just this slop. Well, the oats is almost like the replacement for rice. No, not not even close. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm not even. Just... And you could eat it with some bacon and that's like the fish, right? Just not swimming. No. And uh, the texture is just all wrong. It's like it doesn't want to be seaweed. Doesn't want to be just slop. I, I don't know. I, <laughs> yeah. It's a no for me. Next up on our list is chicken parmo. Now this is a dish from the northeast of England, and it's essentially breaded chicken coated with bechamel sauce and cheese. I mean, all of that just sounds amazing. First up, we make the bechamel sauce, which is basically a white sauce. Um, so equal quantities of butter and flour. So we've got 55 grams of butter, 55 grams of flour, and a pint of milk, and then salt and pepper to taste. Now the main ingredient is the chicken. So we've got chicken breast, breadcrumbs, flour, egg and milk, and two types of cheeses. And today we're going for red Leicester and extra mature cheddar. Step one is to melt the butter. Over a medium heat, gradually sift the flour. You need to be stirring all the time. It's very, it's like the key element in this whole thing is you need to watch it. Slowly add the milk, stirring all the time. You can see how that's thickening already. And with the whisk, I'm just getting all the lumps out. Just add salt and pepper to taste. Cook for 10 to 12 minutes, stirring constantly. It's a good arm workout. Haven't you already had one of those today? I have had one of those today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, more exercise for you. Oh, man. I don't know what it's supposed to look like, but <laughs> I think that looks all right. Now you should put it aside and cover the surface with either cling film or baking parchment. This just prevents a skin layer from forming. Put that aside and do the chicken. So what you want to do is take your two breasts, place them on the cling film, and then cover. And the reason is you're going to flatten them. So the next step is to coat the chicken, but first you need to beat up the egg. So I'm just going to do that now with a splash of milk as well. Now we're ready to coat our chicken. So first in the flour, then in the egg, then in the breadcrumbs. Here we go. <laughs> now fill a frying pan with about a centimetre's worth of oil and fry each chicken breast for about two minutes on each side to brown the breadcrumbs. Now we just need to put the chicken in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes just to finish them off. Oh my goodness, look at that. Now we just need to top it. So despite the fact that we put some uh, paper on it, we still have a bit of a skin. How much do you think needs to go on? All of it. All of it? No. Yes! <laughs> no way do you need to put all of this on two chicken breasts. And now for the cheese, we're going to put cheddar on first, and then red Leicester second, just because. because. Just because. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then just return it back to the oven or put it under a grill until the cheese is melted. Oh, wow, look at that. That smells absolutely amazing. How good does that look? That looks amazing. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Mm, hang on, I'm eating my hair. <laughs> Can't wait to get stuck in. Let's give this a go then. Yeah. Juicy. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. 
Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. That's a good dinner. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah. All those flavors of the cheese and the white sauce with the fried chicken. Oh. Yeah. Mm. There is a version actually um, called a hot shot. I think it's called a hot shot. I might be wrong. Uh, we basically put like chilies and stuff on top of it as well. I'm very tempted to put some ketchup on this, but I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> is that a bit of a faux pas? Ketchup is one of the one of your main food groups, babe. <laughs> oh, it's so good. That chicken is so tender. Yeah, it's really juicy. Mm. Well, that's the winner in my opinion. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the sofa and we'll decide our favourite. Oh, I'm stuffed now. That was a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, so what was your favourite? That lovely combination of the dorset knob and the Cornish nettle yarg. So good. As in, so good. That Cornish nettle yarg, we're going to have to have some in the house, like, all the time. Yeah, well, I think we're going to have some for a while. There's a big <laughs> yeah, bit of cheese. There's <laughs> a lot of cheese to get through. Uh, I think we can manage that, though. I think yeah. we can. Yeah, yeah. no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I do like that flavour as well, but I think uh, my favourite was probably the parmé. But I would, pretend for, for my own personal taste, I might change the recipe a little bit. Maybe put some tomato in there or something, just to perk it up a bit, but... I think if we just add chilies, it yeah, would just be work. like, next level amazing. Mm. Maybe a bit of garlic. But revelation for me has to be the lava bread. Oh my god, my god, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knew that I would like something that looks so... Gross. Disgusting. Blech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think of these things? Have you tried any of this? Tell us down below in the comments and I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, let us know what other regional foods we should try next. If you're not already, then make sure to follow us on all our social media accounts. They're all down here. Um, if you haven't subscribed, then hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell so that you don't miss any future episodes. And we will see you next time. So we're using the same oil that we used when we made our cook sisters and now the kitchen smells a bit like cinnamon and cardamom which is great but now we're going to have cinnamon and cardamom flavoured chicken. <laughs> is that a shoe? I don't think so. <laughs>